Uh, play of the game from way down. One, two, silence. Get Rainer getting absolutely naked. A team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find Rainer. Lifefinder keeps Maya up. It was going to be a close thing. And he like, what? Get out of no! No! Triple stun again. Big flanks coming out from the uh, blaze. It's a death metal, though. Death yeah. metal into oh, the double, my. triple kill. All right, welcome back everybody to the NGS Rewind. I'm your host, Arrow, and I am joined today by Butte Holiday. Hello, everybody. My lights are on today. Usually oh. they're dark, so I'm feeling a little bit light today. All right, and as long as we are doing that, let's uh, let's turn off this chroma key. Can I do that? Can I just, bam, there we go. And you are back to being a normal human being. Congratulations. Thank you. I was one of the Detroit Become Human robots, but now I'm not, so here I am. All right. So for round two of our three match series today, uh, we've got Plug Walk versus Frank's Furters, which is a C West matchup. And uh, let's take a look at what maps and bands we had here real quick. So we had Plug Walk banning out... Uh, Battlefield of Eternity and Towers of Doom. We've mm. got Frank's Furters banning out Braxis and Sky Temple. <sighs> but our first map is actually going to be Alterac Pass. Woo! Yeah. So there you go. Twice I'm in a row. Glad. Oh, that's awesome. We had an awesome uh, game. I'm sure those of you that were here maybe saw it and if you didn't it was against 10 armor and annie oak league and it was epic an epic core battle less than 1000 k health core battle it was awesome it was so epic so maybe we'll see another one of these i don't know <laughs> it could happen so let's go ahead and hop right into it and as the game loads we'll uh, talk about what this is about so again the ngs replay rewind whatever it is rewind is about replaying matches that didn't get a cast in the week and as we go further in the season we'll see more of those games not getting cast just because there'll be more games more flex matches and so on and so forth arrow you literally made up the title i know and i keep screwing it up i'm gonna go ahead and flip over to the game screen now. <gasps> oh my gosh i'm so excited okay what are we excited about okay. now Oh, I see some characters I love! <gasps> okay, so we have the red side is... Is that Frank's? It is! Frank's Furters. And then on the blue side... Okay. Uh, which team would you like to introduce? I want to introduce Frank's Furters because I'm super psyched. All right, All right. So on the side of Frank's Furters, the red team, we have Dallying. Okay. They need to move their chat because it's all over. Okay. Dallying Pig on ETC. Indecisive on Deckard. I love Deckard. DJ Cold Cuts on Garrosh. Boggs playing Rainer. And the Lady of the Nexus, Orphea, played by Magic Master. All righty. And for plug walk over here, we have Pharos on Anubarak, uh, Kagura on Lucio, Diesel on Jaina, 2Js on Phoenix, and Grumpy on Falstad. So uh, much like earlier with the Garrosh, we see that extra range on the Wrecking Ball. Um, Prog Rock, not a big surprise there. And what else do we have out here? Boom, uh, Not that's not Boomerang, that's... Uh, what is it? Gathering Storm from Falstad. Pretty narrow corridor, so Gathering Storm, you know, could... Oh, crap. Oh, a quick kill on the Rainer here. I mean, Rainer opted immediately to go bottom to maintain that soak. Um, unfortunately, it did get a good gank off uh, with the help of Lucio um, to speed them. Did you see it? I didn't see it. I was checking out the top lane. I saw a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, good gank on them. 
Uh, so I was saying about the corridors here for Falstad, where he can get the extra stacks out of his um, hammering. And we've got the W build coming out for a new brack as well. So double double tank setup for Frank's Furters between the Garrosh and the ETC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So putting a lot onto the shoulders of Orphea and Rainer to get the job done here. And uh, Plugwalk's going to get their camp out first. Looks like the uh, Frank's Furters will probably wait until it's about time for the uh, camp to come up before they, or the prison camp to come up before they actually start that. I'm a little uh, surprised that, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't be considering Falstead is uh, in the top lane here against Orphea, but, um, you know, we have two, the two tanks in the mid lane with the healer, so uh, I don't really know how much uh, damage or kill potential they have, really, but Raynor opting for that uh, to go grab that camp. Deckard just chilling out in the bot lane against Phoenix. I'm pretty sure Raynor needs help with this. Uh, like not just now, but just in general, uh, being getting very low there. So they are going to be able to get this camp out probably about the time the prison camps come up. But he'll have, he'll definitely have to go back. Yeah, I mean, on the side of Frank's Furters, the 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 choosing who's in the lane is a little surprising to me. Um, I mean, you have Deckard just chilling out in the bot lane. I mean, he should be helping Rainer with the camp, in uh, in my opinion. But. Um, Maintaining that, I mean, someone's got to get the soak, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, not really a healer's job to do that. So, so Rainer did go back here, and ETC does get a power slide in and the kill onto Jaina. Excellent. Falstead trying to catch up to Orphea, though. Uh, Orphea gets away that that nice mobility with the Q. I think she had it up in case he were to pursue, and Deckard able to throw some potions in her face. So that was uh, that was nice. So we've uh, got all five of Franks. Go uh oh, ahead. Lucio, goodbye. The slow on the Deckard, uh, the Sapphire, uh, going to be very helpful in locking down as they did with Jaina and they will do again with Lucio. So some good lockdown coming from uh, Franks Burgers here. And Falstad in the bot lane working to get some soak as Boggs coming down here saying, get out here, Grumpy. <laughs> And level oh. 7 is available now uh, for Aww. plug walk. Yeah, Frank's Furter is about, uh, about to get 7. Uh, yep, they just did. And uh, Pharaoh's top lane uh, trying to give a little bit of counter pressure in the top. Um, oh, Deckard, get out of there. Yeah, and right now we do see a little bit of an XP advantage over to uh, plug walk because they got those towers in the mid while. Uh, Frank's Furters was working on their their camp, rather. So mm -hmm. we'll see how that plays out for them, you know, on the race to, to level 10. How much for value sure. the cavalry gets. Uh-oh, Lucio. Thrown, stunned, and then the into the fray on ETC to make sure that they get that kill onto Lucio. Good on them for that. And that, and that puts them now a little kill. bit ahead. That's a good kill, able to slow down their rotations as well. Even on the defense, you know, people think the rotations have to maybe be offensive, but this will slow down their ability to rotate, uh, you know, bot lane right now or top lane. So they're opting for bot lane, but Rainer's going to back out. Uh, very smart. Yeah, and I, I didn't quite catch the ETC kill. I thought they were backing away, um, but they, they did not until after they killed ETC. So I'm going to assume we're going to see, I, I, well, actually, maybe I shouldn't assume, you know, with, with the Orphea and uh, the, the Garrosh potential, the root. I mean, there's a lot of setup for Mosh here uh, with, I think, Phoenix, or not Phoenix, uh, Falstead, Lucio, I think are the only ones able to uh, interrupt Mosh here. Nah, Nubarak lives to interrupt Mosh. Yeah, but doesn't it count? Oh, because he's unstoppable, so that would... Uh... Well, he's got three different ways, right? Cocoon can, Burrow Charge can, and... Oh, I did. I can. forgot about Q. Lols. Uh, good comment from the... Uh, from chat here. Balu Gazul. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, it's a tough front line to get past with ETC and Garrosh. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a good point. Um, 
you know, that's an advantage of having kind of tankier teams. Uh, I mean, I would call ETC personally, I call him a soft tank. I really like, he's very, very squishy. Um, I think he works better with other tanky characters. Um, but you know what? Perfect like Garrosh. Um, that's a that's a great point. <laughs> Hi, bad man. Hello, Number eight. eight. <laughs> we appreciate we you joining us. You. I mean, we respect all of our viewers, not just the go. eighth one, but the yeah, first exactly. through the seventh. All of them. Well, and it says we have thirteen, so y'all are getting y'all are getting mad respect. So. Well then, clearly, bad man. Only gust. Uh, an early gust. Um, Probably saved him. <laughs> well, I don't really. I mean, he did use barrel roll and like to walk away initially, which I personally think was a little bit early. Uh, he could have maybe saved it. I don't think they had the lockdown or the damage with them, but oh, the mosh, the mosh comes out. A new is gonna come in here. The they taunt. Can pay, but the taunt, yeah. Oh, Rainer going Lane down. Nato. Oh my god, that was uh So a four for nothing trade with the uh Mosh Pit and uh the Taunt and Lornado kind of bringing everybody right into the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I, I I don't know if, you know, Lornado's I think can sometimes be a little bit to, to place, especially, like directionally, especially in a panic. Um, I'm not sure if he meant to throw it towards his team or or not, but uh, he or she. Um, Given the place where it started, I, I imagine that he was trying to keep everybody uh, together so they could get the kill, but here we uh -oh, go now. Orphia. Orphia misses with her ult, and uh, Burrow Charge coming out to stop the tanks that stun him down. Jada, but they big trouble here. And the into the fray looks like it just uh, threw Orphia down. So the death coming from Garrosh as a new brag is going to Burrow Charge away, and the camp is stopped thanks to those minions in the back. I think, interestingly, Orphia opting for that uh, crushing jaws. I mean, typically, you know, with a mosh or something with, you know, that much, uh, you know, lockdown or CC, you, you typically see the uh, eternal feast, but not a bad pick. I mean, potentially bringing people into the mosh um, or the garage. Oh, is Falstead gonna... Uh, Falstead's just gonna die, maybe? I'm not really <laughs> quite sure what that was. Um, to be honest, but Orphe in a little bit of trouble. Garrosh saying, get out of there, little girl. And here uh, comes a sound, uh, sound barrier. Not really Phoenix. sure what that was for. But... Yeah, Phoenix gets out his purification salvo, but no slow to really help. Uh-oh. Okay, the disengage uh, Lornado coming out of Deckard here. Um, yeah, I, I think on the side of Frank's Spurters, I, I see what they're going for. I mean, to me, they're going for all in and they're relying very heavily on Orphe and Rainer. And Lucio yep. is uh, going down. I'm Big root, we've got a mosh on to two. Follow up wow. from Orphea is able to there get both of those kills. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's that's kind of the combo I was I was kind of alluding to. Deckard with no mana. Make that four. Uh, yeah, really. I mean, so we have two four, uh, two four no fights on both sides. I think for for this objective, right? For this specific yeah. one. Yep. Uh, one on either side. So, Deckard, I I honestly think needs to go back or grab some mana or something. I don't know if he has tap up, but uh, I can't tell. He does have tap up, especially for a fight like this. You're gonna need mana, you know. Deckard's not just a infinite mana character. We have ETC trying to, uh, here comes the Gust. But the Lornado <laughs> able to, oh my god, I thought it was going to be able to completely interrupt that interruption channel, but apparently not. Falstead. Purification, <laughs> Purification Salva going out and uh, takes out the Deckard. So now a 3 nothing trade. These uh, these fights have been going very well for the defending side on each of yeah, these camps. For sure. So, 
Rainer coming down, trying to clear the pressure that's in the bot lane. Uh, I think that this bottom fort is probably toast. It's, we're going to see Falstad fly down here and uh, probably come out to push in that bottom fort as the teams are electing to split up and get as much value as they can. Already mid fort going down and Phoenix working on the top as well. Absolutely. So we'll see if they elect to, once they get these forts down, if they elect to kind of gather together and push, which they're kind of doing in the mid lane. Falstad doesn't have fly though, so if he comes up, it's going to be the long way. Yeah, Raynor uh, does not defend the bottom fort, unfortunately, and will likely. Uh... I think he no. lives here. Oh no! Oh my god, you guys are so ballsy. So we do see the rotation up into the top lane here as they get the fort wall down, or I'm sorry, the keep wall down. Uh, Falstad still trying to push that. Rainer in the bottom away as well. So he's going to get at least the one tower, maybe even the second tower. And they did get one tower in the mid lane as well. So quite a lot opened up for Plugwalk in this game. For sure. A lot of, I mean, they have full map control right now. Um, I, I say full map control. I should say lane control. Um, you know, with all of their lanes pushed up at least, you know, three quarters um, approaching the keep. Approaching the keep walls, um, I think they have how many walls down. They have they have all the walls down. So that's uh, that's a lot of pressure that uh, Frank's Furgers is going to have to deal with. So these next upcoming objectives are extremely important. So uh, just checking out chat, seeing a few names I'm used to seeing there. Two D, of course, coming up for the next game will be joining me as co-caster and. Uh, Psychic out there and we see a boss play in the bot lane here Pharaoh's coming back and stops the ETC uh, I think you walk away check. here I, I, I uh, The cocoon coming out on the Deckard who likely will die You know you say uh, that oh my god Hit the oh my god Garrosh okay, sacrificing let's... his life so that uh, Deckard could get out to all you people out there, I, you know what, I am a healer main, and I hate to see healers die. But you know what, if you have a healer and you lock them down, kill them. <laughs> Please. Right, kill no them. Doubt. I mean, that was a good play from Garrosh, getting uh, Deckard out For of sure. there. So. For sure. For sure. Orpheus ult misses. So does the Gust, though. Uh-oh. Uh, sound barrier did go out. It did hit a couple people, so they do get did this Did Phoenix keep. get interrupted here? I yeah, think I he did. did. Interrupted. Okay. Yeah. We got a lot of pressure on the uh, in the mid for uh, Frank's Furters pushing uh, Winians here. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and this is the same objective that we talked. You know, the fifty second that we talked about. You know, they can be. You can be a little bit patient here. You know, you do have some lane pressure. Um, you know, it's not. They're not out of the fight here, but they don't have to engage right away. But they want to make sure they get in good position for it. Well, that was a good slide knockback, and now we've got Kill the, the false dead here. Uh, and cocoon that is on an the excellent focus. Excellent focus on the side of uh, Frank's Furters to make sure they uh, were getting that false dead who was thrown. So focus that uh, throw target. And they're going to get started on the channel. Once again, the attacking team has always been uh, the one to lose members in these fights. Do you? I don't know if they. No, I don't think they make it. They don't make the invade. They and that's okay don't. though. Or Looks like they're getting. Go uh, hits too, oh my god! Phoenix. Goodbye. And that's Orphia. why you go uh, crushing jaws. Even it may not be the the perfect with the mosh, but it allows you to have your own play and your own setup. Uh, I mean, arguably, kind of it's also a uh, you know a sell for Team Peel. You know, it, it's it's definitely a good alt. Trust me, I, I prefer that alt over the um, Eternal Feast. Um, I guess if they had a team fight like they did uh, in the previous objective, when they were able to combine Crushing Jaws and make sure they got the people that were at least within position to interrupt um, in it, uh, then I think it's a great. As long as you use your alt, listen. At the end of the day. You may take, you know, maybe what's not the best talent, and I say in quotes because I think both talents are fine, but as long, it, it matters what you do with it. So that's all I got to say. 
with that. But it's not yeah, either the size all... of the ult, it's how you use it. Okay, let me just point out that that was Arrow that commented that, that I had that in my mind, and I chose not to say it. So I just want to point out- I saw the out look on your face. <laughs> he knew. He knew. All right, so they're coming up into the top lane. They've got their first cavalry. They're looking to get this push. Uh, looks like uh, Plugwalk's calling to back away from this. They they see this as pretty well gone as it is. Jaina clearing up in the mid lane, and the bot lane is pretty far out. So Jaina's gonna want to come see, up here and help us. They see Jaina mid lane. They know she's there. Um, and a good uh, Hyperion uh, Rainer uh, securing some of the oh, siege falls dead. Ah, uh, he barrel rolls away. See, that was a good save on the barrel roll there. He didn't use it too early. Uh, Garrosh may die for his, uh, his sins there, uh, yeah. his aggressive sins. Looking to get that Jaina, they do get the Anubrak and the Orphea ult, but ultimately three, four members down now for, uh, Frank's Furters. The mid lane, eh, it's probably not gonna go down, I think they can save this no, now. I think they save it, yeah. uh, bottom fort's gonna go down, so just bogs available on Rainer to do anything about anything so I expect them and they're already calling for it to go to that top boss I think a little bit aggressive on the <clears throat> on the side of Frank's furters there the, for the tanks so you know I, I don't think uh, the DPS were necessarily with them I don't think they were that deep and uh yeah, that was I mean, it was really tough. I mean, Garrosh walking in to throw Jaina across the wall that nobody followed up on was kind of the the beginning of that kind of horrifying moment, I think. Uh, Otherwise, uh, I, I, I thought that the push was fine. They didn't have Jaina there for a good long time, so I thought that they did that just fine. Um, right. They just got a little too eager and, you know, uh, level 20 is online for Plugwalk here. They've got a boss. Uh, they go into this keep, so... You know, with level 20s still half a level away for Frank's Furters, this is likely a keep, and if they're not careful, it could be game. Um, I, I, I don't... If they can lock down this Anub, but Gust from the Falstead says, you ain't touching my tank. I mean, you do see Good several deal. ults going out from both sides here. So this uh, is already turning into a good defense for Frank's Furters. Well, so far, of course. Cold Cut's oh, missing oh. with that Warlord's Challenge. Nobody accepting that challenge as the Nubrak Burrow charging in hits Deckard in ETC. And here comes Orphea's ult. Does just barely catch Pharos. Oh, but Orphea is just... I think oh, look she at this a little though. bit into the... Uh... Unfortunately, oh, no, nobody there to lock him down. But he's still not going to be able to live through that. Two, two deaths, ETC and Orphea. Uh, and they're pretty healthy. With that Lucio, the, low on mana. They hit though. the core here. Hit the core here. I mean, yeah, that that is also a yeah. good point. I think they can. I think they have enough lockdown to. Uh, I mean, Jaina's got enough mana, but Jaina taking damage from wow. the <laughs> from the mid uh, keep here. That is, see, you know what? I want to point that out. That's exactly why you need to be especially cognizant if you're on offense and you're going for the core. If you did not take down the rest of the keeps, you are not safe. You don't have a second place to run away. So, unfortunate on the side of uh, Plugwalk there, but you know what? I mean, Frank's Furter still has two dead, um, but this is not game here. I mean, a lot of pressure mid. This next objective could do it. Jaina will not be there for it, uh, for the majority of it, at least. So they may want to initiate when ETC gets up. Yeah, and we do have the camp getting picked up here for Frank's Furters, uh, waiting for the rest of their team to show up. So important to note, there is a, a hefty wave in the bot lane there. And, and keep in mind, again, two lanes of pressure on this will finish a core. So there is a clock for Frank's Furters. They have to really push hard on this while Jane is dead and get as much time out of this as they possibly can. And there goes that, uh, that core. Here comes a third Reaver, so it's going to keep the pressure uh -oh. on the core. Oh my gosh, that is uh, definitely clearable, but a little scary. Uh, so yeah, Jaina is... They are moving. They do not have Orphea, so this is a fight you you want to take if you're uh, Plugwalk here, which they Waiting will. For that cocoon. There it is, and they do get the kill on to Garrosh. And that is 
likely just what they needed. ETC is probably going to make it out thanks to that Lornado. Let's take a look at the 20s for Frank's Furters here. Orphea's ult, Crushing Jaws missing, and the dive in from Anubrac onto Orphea, taking a ton of damage, but ultimately the bug having to walk away. Ring of Frost plus the Purification Salvo into the Death Metal. And now uh -oh. just the two alive as Orphea is well going down, and with two lanes of pressure and in 20 seconds of cavalry, this should be the game going over to Plugwalk. But we uh... said that last game too. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I really don't think the Rainer, I, I think, I don't think he has the mobility that Lunara does <laughs> to Indeed. be able to just jump over people and they definitely have the damage. Um, unfortunate for Frank's Furters. Uh... They do get a kill onto the Anubrak, but at 4k, 2k core going down. So... <laughs> Indeed. And we have some profanities, uh-oh. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, was that in chat? No, 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 in, uh... Oh, you don't have, you don't have, yeah, you don't have chat on. Okay, that makes sense, actually, I should probably <laughs> turn chat on. Like, the, the in-game chat. Oh, yeah, I turned it off. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that, uh, so that it didn't show up on the stream, so... Uh, let's take okay. a look at stats real quick. I'll just pop those up here. Oh, we'll yeah, do please pop that first. up, because I, uh... Because I took mine off, so please pop that up. So 21 kills to 12 there for uh, in favor of their plug walk and overall damage not you know not too far different for some of these I mean you, like Rainer and Jaina were pretty close um, you know the I I felt like both teams had had the opportunities uh, to make it work the ETC Garrosh really strong into this team um, to get those picks but. Ultimately, they were able to, uh, uh, they being Plugwalk, were able to, you know, get more group kills, multi kills, uh, when they pushed their R buttons as opposed to uh, <laughs> Frank Furters pushing theirs. For sure, I, I I think on the side of Frank's Furters, I I say I think the DPS on that side did not have the luxury of uh, mobility as. Um, plug walk did and so I think that they were able to follow up much more cleanly, but also, you know regroup um, much easier um, Especially against that double tank comp that seemed to be very very aggressive on the side of the tank So I think you know Orpheus Q may be able to like give her some level of mobility But I really don't think that Frank's Furters was able to really really capitalize on their combos because they were being contested very heavily especially by the false dead gust um which which were great um you know if Jaina throws down a blizzard like if you're gonna stand in the blizzard you're probably gonna die to a combo in a you know a second or two so um but i mean despite not having you know double tanks um you know plug walk managed to pull it out and get past that front line and disengage and force them to use their alts and then re-engage later so props to them it was a good game so our next map was selected by Frank's Furters, and they decided that they wanted to go to Volskaya Foundry. Woo! I love Volskaya. I love Volskaya. Volskaya is fun. So, uh, what what changes do you want to see here? What uh, different heroes? What different strategies do you want to see out of, say, for example, Frank's Furters, uh, to be successful in this game? I think they need to really, uh, really draft some mobility. I think they also need to uh, draft better to the map. Um, I think, especially on Alterac, um, you know, with those with those quarters, but having like multiple ways of escape or like kind of multiple um, areas of approach, I think the mobility really benefited them there. Um, so I think they need to draft better to the map. Um, and I think they need to, you know, give themselves some mobility. That would be my suggestion. But what what that means in terms of specific heroes, I don't really know. Um, but that would be that would be what I would say to them. Well, what we are going to get is uh, no mobility out of Frank's Furters. Uh, we'll get some uh, better mobility out of uh, uh, Plugwalk, though. I mean, so they had uh... Uh, they had 
they had good mobility um, last game. So, you know, maybe they, you know, the Lucio uh, was great. Um, being able to give even more uh, team. Wow. Oops. I'm like looking at the stream and I'm wondering why I can't see the game. Sorry. I'm like a little grandma today. I <laughs> uh, um, okay. Let's see here. Okay. We got. Yeah, I'm uh. I mean, Franksfurters does have a comp that I think, um, you know, does provide map value. Uh, the Johanna is really strong here. Kelvazad, because they're kind of in a centralized location. Even Alarak. Sure. Um, I I don't know, though. The Kelvazad with Alarak and even Johanna, ultimately, kind of puts them in a bit of a tough spot, I think. But we'll see how it goes. Um, let's get this uh, these teams introduced so on the left we have Plugwalk currently up 1-0 in the series pharaohs playing muradin kagura playing lucio diesel on lunara two jays on kalthos and grumpy on arthas and then on the red side for frank's birders we have dallying pig playing joanna indecisive decisive enough to pick brightwing though uh, Magic Master playing Kel'Thuzad, Boggs playing Alarak, and DJ Cold Cuts playing Rexar. I wonder what his favorite cold cut is. I should probably I, ask him. I don't know. <laughs> um, but but I think on the side of Frank's Furters, they are a heavy execution comp. If they do not KTZ and Alarak, you don't execute your combos, you don't get damage. You don't do anything, so, um, you know, that's gonna be on them to see if they're able to execute. So we've got the Lightning Surge build coming out uh -oh. from Alarak. As I went to the solo lane to check out what was going on down there. <laughs> I didn't expect much to happen in the top lane right away. Um, we also see Rexar taking uh, the additional auto attack damage to minions and structures, or not structures, uh, monsters rather. Um, Hypershift, Laws of Hope. So some of those being uh, a little bit different than kind of Standard lately. Uh, DJ oh, Coldcut's right getting smart. caught by the Lunara and Arthas, though. For the first, you know, even uh, even with Lucio not being there, you know, Lunara being able to be uh, quick on her feet <laughs> with rotations. You know, I think she's one of those characters that's definitely able to do that uh, to help out the solo lane. You know, don't be afraid to help out solo laners. I think a lot of teams are just like, you know, let the solo laner do their thing, which is fair. You know, if you if they're fine and they're doing their neutralizing or winning their lane, you know, don't bother them. But, you know, at the end of the day, like helping helping them out, allowing them to get some level of pressure, maybe taking a taking part of the wall or doing more damage, any of that helps. So, um. so we do have uh, Plugwalk ahead in the item camp game. Um by a fair bit here two almost 230 here 210 right now so franksford is not going to be able to get a second turret in the middle of this control point and now the siege camp being held for plug walk i i somewhat expect maybe even to see them look at the uh support camp if they get mm -hmm. if they get, they get a, a moment here Murden getting the stun on the bogs there. Uh, gravity lapse stalls him out as well, though. You took a deep breath. What do you What do you want to say? I, <laughs> I was gonna talk about party mix because I know Rec would Rec would talk about party mix, but Rick loves um, party mix. It's his favorite talent I, ever. Uh, I mean, <sighs> to be fair. I mean, this is a map where I can kind of see it, though, because it, it, it gives you the extra radius and allows you to really help your team on these control points. Yep, I agree. I mean, you know, at the, at the same point, uh, you know, Accelerando, there, there's a lot of places to move, you know, around the points. Uh, all of them, actually. So um, having some flexibility there uh, is definitely beneficial, but no turrets going out quite yet. Oh. Well, as I say that, uh, dropping the turret, DJ Cold Cuts being <laughs> their their turret buddies here. Uh, not much focus coming out of either team. They're just kind of going back and forth. Uh, yeah, they're getting the chase on the here. DJ Cold Cuts though. Grumpy really zoning them off in the back there. 
Ferris right in the middle of Joanna in trouble Alphars. here. And a nice finish uh, from Arthas uh, with no mana, but uh, a nice finish on uh, the Joanna. And that is a that is a big uh, kill for them, especially at this point. Misha, what are you doing? Just holding, just pausing the the counter, just for a moment. So let's see who gets in. Murd and Lunara, okay. So I do want to call out just here, uh, Picasina. Um, it's I don't know. There, there's some Twitch. Uh, I don't want to say issues. It may just be a different. Um, now I can't remember. Not compression, but different style or encoding. That's I think was what it is. Um, so try different like browsers or the Twitch app or what have you. Um, if you're on your phone, because uh, it's definitely live. I I mean I've got it on my tablet in front of me. So oh that no! Protector, holy oh that cow. is not a, that is not a good place for them to be in. The nice polymorph. Oh my God! Why is he alive? You better be count. Wow. No, don't go back in. You wow. better be counting your blessings and kissing your Lucio's booty, man. That was some excellent healing and excellent peel coming out of uh, plug walk there. Holy crap! Count your blessings, people. Count your blessings. But uh, I, they should not have been there in the first place. Um, I, I'm a little surprised they didn't opt to go topside to try to at least get some damage on the well. Um, they spent a lot of time in mid, um, but they got the wall down, so... Um... Yeah, and that punch going right into the middle up by the fort when it had almost no health. Really, you know, good on Frank's for just for... Uh-oh, are we going to see an invade here? We will see an invade. Coming in hot, Joanna at half health. Right wing. Oh. Elrak! Oh my god, where did you come from? Bye, Joanna. Goodbye, Elrak. Goodbye, Bright Wing. Good night, Moon. Do they Moon. get the stun? They don't. Oh my god, Bright Wing, please. Bright Wing, please. Yeah, that should have been another kill on the Bright Wing, but Grumpy trying to stay alive Grumpy has almost no health. Grumpy needs to walk away. <laughs> He's got a murd in there. There we go. That's a that is a huge win for Plugwalk. Uh, oh, big taunt out of get diesel. Get something here. Grab the uh, grab the support camp. Grab it all. And they're at level ten right now. Yeah, with this level ten, I would have liked to have seen him, you know, get the pressure into a lane. But it took him so long to get that last kill under Rexar that. For sure. You know, getting the support camp still gives them the value of uh, items on the next control point, but we'll see if they rotate up here for the bright wing. It looks like uh, Muradin does jump in, but gets polymorphed. The stun going Oh, Muradin. Out. Oh, nice follow up by the KT. We'll likely not kill, uh, oh my God, Arthas. Let me see KTZ oh, landing. Oh, he gets uh, the bright wing. Oh no, was it worth it? Probably, because you're probably going to get two kills here. Well, Maybe they should not. definitely get this fort. Oh my god. Oh, they absolutely, they they did use a turret for it. Um, I am a little surprised that Lucio is not the one with the uh, the healing item here. Um, I personally prefer to take it usually, uh, especially when I'm mobile like Lucio, uh, if you need to get it somewhere specifically in the fight, um, but. Yeah, we usually keep it on the tanks. Uh, for one, because they're a little bit sturdier, but for two, it's usually where you want the uh, <laughs> the healing anyways, is up in that front line. Well, right, but if you have someone like Lucio who, you know, has the ability to be wall riding, you know, around where your tanks are and can boop and peel for your tanks. But, I mean, sometimes they're the ones also that have the turrets, but, um, yeah, it just kind of depends. I like to take it, especially because... You know, when you have tanks that don't peel the back line, you know, sometimes the back line needs healing too, so... <laughs> so we have uh, a fight getting started here as Kel'Thuzad does chain Misha and... I'm sorry, not Misha. Uh, oh, Merton and the bomb and coming out. Everything coming out from KTZ landing a combo. Brightwing phase shifting. But Kel'Thuzad getting taken out by Diesel. Diesel still has a turret that he hasn't used. Uh, see if he and KT has their uh, healing item. Lo turret, I'm... A little surprised it hasn't gone out yet. Maybe they didn't feel it was necessary. Uh, Lunara 1v1ing this Rexar. Nature, uh, some uh, some animal on animal action here. Lunara's uh, not an animal. <laughs> you don't want to know hybrid. what my nickname for her is. It's not very nice. All right, then. I would, uh... 
Yeah, I'm I'm a little surprised they're opting to push here, but I mean, they don't know oh, where they exactly are, they so there you go. Well, they're coming from their core because they were just dead. <laughs> well, no, no, no. The three, the three grabbing the turret camp. Yeah. So, I'm not sure if they knew that. Uh, I didn't have the uh, that team vision on, but they're able to get some of the wall. They may lose some of their lives for it. Lucio may die here. A good focus on Frank's Furters. Uh, KTZ, uh, 200 health here. Yeah, just barely surviving the uh, Cindergos, and now that's gonna give. The potential for Frank's furters to get in on this control point, maybe uh, get themselves a protector. Yeah, I don't know. I I wouldn't say I disagree. Maybe I would have kept uh, you know Arthas on that point to secure that. I mean, they could have gotten the they could have probably gotten the keep if they would have had somebody on the objective. But I mean, you know, they're trading a fort. Uh, likely the Frank's furters is excuse me going to grab a fort here. Um, right wing and Alarat getting in the protector here. Uh, the Q going on to Misha <laughs> for some reason. Ah, uh, you know, you punch a bear. Wait, you punch a bear. What Q? Somebody else's Q, clearly. So, Burn. fort fight going down as Misha gets rooted. Big root from Al uh, at that. Uh, Arthas. Frank Spurter is not doing so hot. Uh, you know, their healer is in the protector. Not that Brightwing is a giant burst healer, but they are, uh, they are not doing so hot. Lunara taking full advantage of that. Protector having to back up. They have no tower to go back to. If I were them, I'd make sure I finish the kill on uh, Brightwing and Alarak. Don't even mess around. Just Joanna's gonna... <gasps> oh my goodness. Alarak says, if I die, you're coming with me. Brightwing did get out with that blink heal. We never did go over our uh, heroics. Let's take a look at those. So we've got the Phoenix, uh, Sound Barrier, of course, that's Cinder Ghost we've seen a couple times, Leaping Strike, and Avatar for the Murden. Yeah, no surprise on the Blessed Shield uh, from Joanna, the blink heal. Um, I mean, I am a little bit surprised only because with the, you know, the Murden, Lunar, and Lucio, um, you know, KT is not too much of a threat, but I mean, maybe with their CC locked on, Brightwing's thinking, hey, you know, I need to be able to teleport out. Um, yeah, that gives her the, the mobility to get away from something like a Cindergosa or, you know, just a, an Arthas slowing down. Yeah, so the Lucio oh, no. at 13. Uh, Good night, Grumpy. Taking Oops. all together. Uh, Lucio gains 5% movement speed. Uh, um, I don't know if I agree with that, um, hmm. but, yeah, um, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe to maintain, a you know, rotation pressure, um, maybe Lucio needs it to get out of sticky situations, I'm not quite sure, um. Yeah, I mean, it kind of builds into that party mix and also mm -hmm. the uh, the level 20 giving the additional healing as well. You know, so he's going to get sure. pretty fast uh, movement speed, allowing him to get away from things like Alarak mm -hmm. Telekinesis or even Kel'Thuzad Chains. For sure. For sure. They do have, uh, the side of Frank's Furters, though, they do have slows. Uh, <laughs> Wreck, so... I don't even know what that Lucio 13 is. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was commenting on. Oh, man. Yeah, I know he would be upset with me if I didn't comment on the Lucio build, even though I wouldn't identify myself as a big Lucio player. Uh-oh. And the sound barrier coming out uh, does not hit Lunara, which may not really matter because Control-Alt-Delete, Alarak, and Rexar go down. Yeah, Living Bombs got so much value in that. A couple of Living Bombs getting spread around onto those heroes. Ultimately, uh... Not what you want to have happen. And uh, the juke coming out from Grumpy, telling Magic Master that he doesn't care about his icicles. I mean, I think that's that that's that point control I was talking about. You know, I don't. Aside from you know Joanna and maybe Rexar, I don't really see a lot of uh, point control on the side of Frank Spurters. I mean, you got you know Lucio, you got a. Uh, Sound barrier, you got KT, living bomb, you know, forcing the displacement uh, of the enemy team unless they want to keep spreading the bomb. Uh, you know, you have Arthas. Uh, Cinder Ghost, I mean, arguably can be used at any time. 
you know, maybe necessarily want to use it on the point. This is the worst point of all three of them. So this one, I think, is where a lot of crap goes down, uh, especially with these conveyor belts. Um, and the, you know, it's it's a much open, much more open point, I think, than... I think it's bigger than the top one. Is it not, it's, or is it the same it's size? It's pretty large. 70%, they do get level 16s picked up here. Let's zoom back down to the teams as they come in for this fight. Level 16s shown on your screen there. 90%, here they come. I'm opting for the right side. The uh, emitter goes out already. Uh, everyone at full health. Uh, not, not really. Uh... <laughs> Counter-Strike well, goes out there. And uh, Rexar, once again, very low from the damage coming from Lunara, just jumping all over him throughout that fight. Dowling Pig trying to stay in, keep this on overtime. Maybe even trying to get away, but couldn't. No, I think I think he's fine. I. I mean, they re-engage here. I'm not. Uh, I, I'm a little uh, unsure why they would do that, especially oh, when Kelzad. they just got a protector. They're low health. They're spreading bombs like crazy. I, I, just leave. Just walk away. You know, you can you can defend this, but maybe can't defend this with uh, two people. Um, yeah, you know, Rex says good emitter. I, I like the early emitter as well because it helps them to secure the point and it that lasts Rexar's for a little emitter? while. I thought that was. No, it was. Uh, um, it was the blue side. I, I don't was... remember who dropped it. Yeah, I was going to say, but the, I mean, it's like they really didn't need it, <laughs> but maybe not. But it's better to have it and not need it. Um, gives them even just a little bit of extra healing and mana. So, right. I guess the problem was is no one was taking damage like at all. So, oh boy. Um, OK, this is a, l a little bit sloppy. Why are they? Why is no one in the protector? Well, they because just... they wanted to shut it down with Arthas. I was just surprised because that left Muradin just hanging out for a bit. So they do get the kill out of it. I'm sorry, the keep, rather, not the kill. Level 19, almost 20, half of a level to go. Get and... that 20 and re-engage here. Yeah. They have nothing to go back to. I think if if you're Frank's Furters, I don't I don't see the reason for them to chase after the protector. I think they could have cleaned up top and then you know Agree. tried to look for something afterwards rather than Especially trying to look for this something far right out. this second. I mean, they are really far away from literally everything. But here they go. They're gonna take the team by Lucio. Sound barrier goes out, but Lunara gets a full KTZ combo. Yeah, and we did see and still see living bombs being spread here. Uh, so they're not in the greatest position to to just keep going. Yeah, unfortunate. Lucio stayed on, I think, uh, healing too long. He was trying to wall ride, trying to get down to the Arthas. But I think if he was on speed boost, he would have maybe gotten there sooner, potentially been able to save him. I'm not quite sure. But, um... Yeah, and so ultimately, we do see that Frank's Furters lost this top keep um, in order to get those kills. I... <sighs> I don't know that that was worth it. I mean, you just have now you have pressure uh, constantly in that top lane. Um, there are multiple ways for Plugwalk to come in and win this game, um, and now they're going to come I down and invade, which is fine. They get a free turret. That's that's yeah, fine. But I mean, at the end of the day, they yeah they lost a lot. I mean, and um, Plugwalk's been doing a good job of trying to. You know, get what they can safely. I mean, ar you know, arguably like a little bit risky, but they got out. They left when they should have, and you know, um, now their whole team's up. So they're able to maybe look for a fight here pre twenty. But even if they don't, they have all lanes pushed relatively far, uh, so they have that uh, macro pressure. Yeah, and uh, we KTZ can see them going in. lagging behind. I oh man. Looks like Lunara is going to make that happen. Jumping over the Misha, they're going to get another kill onto the Brightwing as well. And they're going to keep going. DJ cold cuts with Rexar as well. The route onto the final two. And now, guess what? There's no keep here to retreat to. Boggs goes down and only Dallying Pig left available. And unfortunate, uh, not for unfortunate. long. I, I, I really think, you know, you got to do the old... Uh, the old warfare tactic where you got, you know, someone strong in the front, someone strong in the back to protect the back line. And KTZ was just out, you know, in the open, able to easily get caught. I mean, Joanna turned right around to try to help him out, but 
you know, that's where uh, Joanna is much more deterring than KTZ is, so. Um, well, you know, they took full advantage of it. Yeah, that's going to be uh, game two now going over to uh, Plugwalk. Take a look at these talents here. So, you know, again, good on them for, for recognizing the opportunity and catching uh, Kel'Thuzad. In fact, I, I believe that that was entirely because Lunara took that speed bonus at level one. Hippity hop. Mm. Uh, that she was able to catch up to Kel'Thuzad because he wasn't mounted um, and ultimately get that kill. Yeah, it took, I took, because she, uh, she has a slow, is it auto attack or is it Q? I don't remember. I, I, I've literally played her once. W, that's her W. Um, so, I mean, she managed to land one and then after that it was just, you know, relying on the team for follow up and yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good point. Um, so just taking a look at these stats here, looking at hero damage, Kyle Foss, uh, double the damage coming out from everybody on the on the enemy team. In fact, four of Plugwalk had more damage than even the top damage of uh, Frank's Furter. So really strong uh, group fighting. You know the damage coming out from Lunara spreading around as well. Although certainly not greatly right. over the enemy team, but the living bombs just doing so much sure. work in that. Mm -hmm. I agree, and I mean, I mean, the healing numbers relatively even. I think both healers played well. Um, I do think I see what they were going for. I'm not sure what the pick order was, um, and where Brightwing was in that, um, in that grouping there. But um, I don't know, especially with you know the type of comp that they have and what type of map this is. I I really disagree. I think there's better healers out there, um, especially on this map. Um, and especially with the type of team that they have, you can only polymorph one person. Um, so, you know, Lunara, you may polymorph, but, you know, Murden's right next to you. Arthas can slow you. So, yeah, the KT was a force to be reckoned with there. And, uh, I mean, yeah, d yeah, numbers don't lie. I mean, double, I think, is a little bit, you know, clearly there's, it's ind indica wait, indicative. Wow, I'm like having difficulty today. Indicative of, uh, you know, an issue, not uh, grabbing kills there. Um, but you know what? At the end of the day, it was pretty good stuff from both sides. We did see some, you know, bright spots from both teams. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It was a it was a good game. Good games to watch. Good games today. And I'm glad we didn't see any Tomb of the Spider Queen. Thank you guys so much. I'm so sick of that map. <laughs> so sick of it. Oh, coincidentally, we don't have Tomb of the Spider Queen in the next match either. Well, uh, Butte, we're going to go ahead and wrap up for... This is game number two between Plugwalk and Franksfurters, or match number two, I suppose, uh, out of Div C West. We're going to be heading off into Division B in a moment here, and I'll be joined by Tootie as co-caster for that. Uh, anything you want to say to the people at home before we take off for a quick break? I love you, Mom. No, I'm just kidding. She doesn't watch my Twitch. Um, <laughs> no, thank you, everybody, for coming in. I think this is a good opportunity. Thanks for coming in chat and supporting, you know, Arrow with this uh, this new weekly thing. I think this is awesome, and hopefully you guys uh, enjoy the casts, and um, hope you guys have a good Sunday. Uh, Sunday fun day. Um, I will be co-casting later uh, with Weenus, 5.30 uh, Pacific, so you should totally come check that out. That's going to be uh, a meme show uh, because I'm only allowed one swear, so I won't use the other term, but come check it out. But uh, yeah, stick around for the last game. Uh, should be a good one, so thanks for letting me cast with you, Arrow. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. And of course, uh, for that cast later at uh, 5.30 Pacific, that's at twitch.tv slash moistweenis, W-E-N-I-S. All right, we will be back in a few <laughs> minutes uh, with 2D for game number three that's going to be between Who Knows Gaming and a Logical Decision. Don't go anywhere. Woo!